Welcome. Thanks so much for checking this out. We have a unique opportunity this time. Uh, originally scheduled for lay led this Sunday was Warren McWilliams to come and deliver a message. And with our cancellations, we obviously didn't have lay led, but Warren has graciously agreed to come and preach that message here. So that'll be available here in just a minute. Before Warren comes, I wanted to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to mention some prayer requests. We have been praying for Roy Hawkins. Uh, they thought that they had seen uh, some cancer, and so they did an MRI, and the MRI revealed uh, that there is no cancer, and uh, so Roy will continue to be uh, monitored and look into that, so that's a great, a great thing. Uh, we do have a couple of people uh, that have come down with flu and are battling through those, um, continue to have people battling through uh, cancer treatment, so just remember, uh, if you know those names, to pray for them uh, by name, and if you don't know those names, to pray for them uh, anyway, let's let's take an opportunity uh, to have that prayer together. If you'd pray with me, dear God, you are good, and we thank you for it. In this time of isolation, uh, that just compounds an already existing isolation for some, we pray that they might know your presence. We thank you for this great news for Roy, and we continue to ask that you'd be with him. Uh, for those who have battling with the flu, we ask you, Lord that you'd be with them. Those who are continuing uh, cancer treatments, God, we ask you'd be with them. Uh, those who are small business owners or whose businesses um, are affected by the coronavirus and the precautions being taken, Lord, I pray that you'd be with them and, and be with those employees as well, that they might know your presence and that they might be taken care of and you might enable us to uh, be able to take care of one another in those different ways. God, as we come to hear your word, we pray, Lord, that um, our hearts would be receptive and we'd be challenged and inspired by your truth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture is Genesis chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more because God took him away. Well, thank you for watching this video. And I also want to thank my pastor, Justin Dunn, for inviting me to preach a sermon I've been working on for a while. Didn't know exactly where or when, but this is a good time. And I want to thank all those who have helped make this possible. Steve Little is here. There's only three of us in the room. So if you don't hear a lot of applause, that's why, okay? And uh, Mike actually has been involved in and uh, technology stuff for years and years. If you haven't watched Allison Kendall's sermon yet, be sure and do that. And I would say watch Justin's sermon, children's sermon on Psalm 23 as well, because you know sometimes he has, deals with issues that we all need to deal with, whether you're 73 like me or a lot younger. Well, I do want to talk about that passage in Genesis about a man you might know. I pronounce it Enoch. Enoch. Um, let me start with uh, an illustration before I get too deep into this. Many, many years ago, there was a commercial on television that caught my attention. The question that began the commercial was, what do you want on your tombstone? Now, the first time I heard that, I immediately thought, as I think we're supposed to, about graveyards and tombstones and epitaphs and so on. But, well, if we were, if we were in a room uh, with lots of people, I'd ask you to raise your hand. You can do this at home if you want to. Do you remember the commercial? It may be a generation gap. Of the three of us, two hands went up and one hand stayed down. That's all I'm gonna say, okay. Of course, the tombstone was a brand name for pizzas. And the real question is, what topping do you want? Or toppings, if you want you know, a Supreme or something, how many toppings do you want? But I'm gonna take that original meaning and ask the question, what could we put on the tombstone for Enoch? Well, one thing that might be the Bible trivia thing is, uh, he's the father of Methuselah. Uh, Methuselah is, according to what we know, the oldest man who ever lived. But there's something else I wanna highlight. Actually, I've got two things I wanna highlight. So maybe this is not a real sermon. I don't have three points, and I don't know if I have a poem or not, but to know that analogy, you have to be pretty old also. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Enoch, it says twice, walked 
with God. According to one of my favorite Bible scholars, only three individuals in the Old Testament have that identity. Enoch, Noah, and then way over, squirreled away in the book of Malachi, Levi is mentioned. So we're going to talk about Enoch. Walking. Walking is a word picture, an image for our relationship with God. Uh, most of the older translations that say walked of God, our pastor read from a translation that it correctly says walked faithfully with God. Another paraphrase says walk steadily with God. So walking, a relationship with God with a word picture of walking. So let's back up a second. When you think about walking, just the everyday practice of walking, what kind of walking are we talking about? My favorite TV series of all time, as many of you may know, is MASH. And there's a, a great episode where Hawkeye Pierce is sleepwalking. Middle of the night, gets out of bed and walks around, doesn't know he's still asleep. Uh, they're, they're strolling, hiking. Uh, the walking I do the most these days to try to get healthy, stay healthy, is usually I go to a wellness center and I walk on a treadmill. I, I like to say that's a metaphor for my life, walking fast but getting nowhere. Well, I am getting somewhere. I'm getting healthier. But there may be uh, other kinds of walking and all that. If you've ever been in a marching band or in the military, you're watching in step, in formation. There's lots of walking. But walking is a good image, a word picture for life itself. Usually when we talk about walking in life, we mean we have a goal, we have a direction, we have some place we're trying to get. And sometimes we walk with other people. Now when I go to the Shawnee Mall these days to walk, and you know, social distancing, we, there's six or seven, eight people the time of day I go, it's early in the morning, and we say hello to each other, but we keep away from each other. So I, don't, I walk alone, basically, uh, there are people around 10, 20, 30 feet away. And of all the people there, the six or eight or ten people, only one do I really know well, and that's another church member here at University Baptist Church. And I say hello to her. Uh, the last time I saw her a couple of days ago was actually her birthday. So I said happy birthday to her from a distance. But walking alone is not what we really are doing because, like Enoch, we're walking with God. Uh, sometimes we walk in the sense that we follow someone. I was preaching in a church years ago uh, for a former student, and the baptistry drapes, the drapes here pull, we're not baptizing this morning, but the baptistry had a picture, most baptistries do, uh, at least older churches, usually of a, of a river, the Jordan River, you know. But this one had the words, follow me, in large letters. I mean, that's another image for the Christian life. We follow Jesus. We walk with Jesus. Uh, I've never done any serious dancing in my life. We won't pursue this story very much, but in old style dancing, a man and a woman, you know, someone has to quote lead and someone has to follow. Well, we're all followers of Jesus in that sense. The imagery of dancing, excuse me, of walking with God, walking with God, is all through the Bible. I won't chase a lot of references here, but just to mention some things. I jotted down some passages you might know. Paul says several different things. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Paul says in another place, we walk by the Spirit, or in another place in that same passage, one translation says, we keep in step with the Spirit. Uh, John says we walk in the light. Uh, again, back to Paul. Paul says that baptism, since I mentioned baptism, that we're buried of Christ in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Now, I'm using the word picture that's given in the book of Genesis because I think it's powerful, memorable, and most of us can identify with. But it may not be your favorite word picture for the Christian life. You might want to land on passages about friendship or service 
for discipleship. Or maybe you can't resonate with the walking image because of some life situation. Uh, I know lots of people who are confined to wheelchairs, people that have walkers, assistance for walking, people that use canes, some of those people are in our congregation. And then again, sometimes this image, I think, is pushed too far towards individualism. Like it's just me and God. Uh, if we were in an auditorium with, with music and so on, one of my favorite hymns is called Trust and Obey, and it begins, when we, when we walk with the Lord. In this room right now, there are only three people. We're two or three are gathered. Christ is here. On a Sunday morning, if we, when we're back in this auditorium for early service, later service, there'll be lots more people here that walking with God. But there's a second thing the passage tells us. As I mentioned briefly, it's mentioned again in the New Testament, God took him. So this is where the tombstone introduction breaks down. Because maybe Enoch did not have a tombstone. Apparently he did not literally die. He went with God and did not die, it sounds like. It's mentioned again in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, where famous heroes and heroines of faith are mentioned. When I was in college or seminary, the, the technical term in textbooks was the translation of Enoch. Well, that's a little confusing. Translation is like from Hebrew to English. Well, this is another use. There may have been a historical marker someplace in the ancient world. This is the last place Enoch was ever seen. Then he disappeared. A long time ago, I heard a story, and I, I don't know where it came from. It's not in any commentary I own in my house, but the story, maybe it's a preacher story. I don't mean to put those down, Pastor. Uh, is that Enoch and God walked together every day, and one day they walked a long ways, and God turned to Enoch and said, You know, Enoch, we're a lot closer to my house than your house. Why don't you just come home with me? So Enoch walked with God. And God took him. There are two people mentioned in the Old Testament that did not physically die. Enoch and Elijah. Elijah traveled away in the fiery chariot. If we happen to be Roman Catholic by background, you'll find that they believe in the, in the same thing happened to Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's called the bodily assumption of Mary. So when we get to this point, that Enoch was taken to be with God, that makes me think about issues like death and afterlife. He didn't die, literally, but we know he went to be with God. Now, we're in the Old Testament. I won't go deep into this. It's not time for a mini-lecture. But a lot of the textbooks say that in the early days, Hebrew history, early days, that the Hebrews did not have a strong, clear belief in afterlife. They believed in some vague, shadowy underworld, and maybe everybody goes to the same place. They didn't have a clear, distinct view, that we'd say, of heaven and hell. That's not highlighted here. It just says that Enoch walked with God, God took him, he went to be of God. But in light of the world situation, the pandemic, there, there's a lot of thoughts about mortality and death, uh, scary things are happening. But we're also in the Easter season. I'm not going to talk about resurrection right now. Resurrection was believed by some of the Jews in the days of Jesus, not all. But in just a few weeks, whether we're in this room or watching a video, our pastor will talk to us about the strong Christian faith in the future and in our resurrection. But right now, right now we're not, I'm not mortally ill to my knowledge. I'm in good health. I don't think about death on any regular basis. So we're talking now about briefly about how do we live lives today, knowing that at some point I would die and then be resurrected eventually. Let me bring in one other passage. Now, when a pastor does this, a preacher does this, I used to get nervous. I said, oh, no. I said, Mom, is I'd lean over to my mother in the pew, and I was 8 or 10 or 12. I'd say, is he going to start another sermon? He's been talking long enough already. Well, let me read a passage. This is one of my favorite passages from Isaiah 
chapter 40, verse 31. And the context is important, but if you do scripture memorization, you probably know this from some version. Those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. I thought of two examples as I read through that passage recently. One example comes from a, a Bible scholar. I've never met him. I have a good friend who's met him, but I've never met this scholar. Uh, I've read lots of his books, but the most moving book he ever wrote for me is a book where he wrote about his wife being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when she was very young. Actually, about the time they got married, uh, she had this disease for several years and passed away. And he wrote a book called Walk On. I don't own the book. I reread it a few weeks ago. Walk On is Bible studies, reflections, autobiography about this man's experiences with his wife's uh, tragic illness and her death. I'd read the book before, but this time I actually paid attention to the preface. I'd never wondered where the name of the book came from. He says the name of the book, Walk On, is based on a U2 song. Okay, I've lost all credibility. What would I know about U2? I actually watched a video online. I know a little bit more than I used to know. But in the book he says he's trying to talk about the experience his experience of walking on with God through the realities of life. My other example goes way back. I was very young, newlywed. We joined a church. I knew the pastor, knew of him. And then one of the first Sundays were there. He tells us that his daughter, a young lady in her grade school age, had been diagnosed with leukemia. And so, over the next several months, we got to hear him preach regularly about what it means to face death, the death of a loved one. And one of those sermons is based on that Isaiah passage. He says there are times in the Christian life you can fly like an eagle. Other times you can run really fast. But sometimes the best you can do is walk. We're living in trying times. The best some of us can do is walk. We're not walking alone. We're walking with fellow Christians, whether it's through social media, phone calls. I was having a kind of a low morning this week. It was rainy, dreary, it's been a few times, and the phone rang. It's a person I hadn't talked to in several months. And we chatted for a while. He just, he just wanted to check on me, not a member of our church. And I told this friend of mine, I said, you know, right now it's dreary outside. I was looking out to see the rain come down, and you are my virtual sunshine. And I heard kind of a chuckle in the background. Let me close with this before I lead us in prayer. A few years ago, I had some serious medical issues. A phrase I heard a lot when I was uh, growing up watching TV doctor shows was, when someone's getting better, they're ambulatory and taking nourishment. That's where we are today. Whether it's literal or figurative, we're walking. We're walking with God. We're walking with Christian friends and family members, and we walk together knowing that Easter is coming. Let's pray together. Our Father, I thank you on behalf of all the people who have helped us get to this point in the Easter season. We thank you for the leadership of this church, all those who work behind the scenes, behind the camera, in so many ways. It feels odd to be in the building today. It's, it's Sunday morning, but there are not many people here. But you're here and you'll be with us all through the next few days. And one of these days, you'll bring us back together to this place. But the place is not as important as you are. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen.